Algebra 1, number 1.7d, we're going to talk about equivalent equations. Equivalent means equal. When two equations have the same solution set, we talked about that in the last video, when they have the same solution set, they're equivalent. They're equal. A solution set is a collection of all the solutions that make the equation true, and the solutions are in a braces. See, these little curvy type things here. It's like parentheses with a little point in the middle, aren't they? So take a look at these. These are equivalent and these are not equivalent. These are equivalent to each other because they have the same solution of 6. n plus 4 equals 10. Well, 6 plus 4 equals 10. n plus 6 equals 12. 6 plus 6 equals 12. So n stands for 6 in both of them. That makes them equivalent. They both have 6 as a solution. They're equivalent. Now look at these two n plus 8 equals 10, so that would be a 2, and n plus 8 equals 14, that would be a 6. And because that's a 2 and that's a 6, they have different solutions that are not equivalent. Two equations are equivalent if and only if they have the same solution set, okay? So remember, we put the solutions inside these braces, that's called the solution set, okay? If you're really confused about solution sets, then you want to go back to 1.7c, okay? All right, so keep the scale balanced. Equations are like a scale. What's ever on one side is on the other side, and you want to keep it balanced. You don't want one side to be heavier than the other. So these both have n equals 2 as a solution, so they're balanced. If we add the same amount to each side of the scale, it'll stay balanced. Well, if we add the same amount to each side of an equation, both sides of the equation are going to be equivalent. They're going to be equal to each other. So let's take a look at this one. We've got n plus 4 equals 10. And if we add 2 to both sides, we add 2 to this side of the equal sign and 2 to that side of the equal sign, now we've got n plus 4 plus 2 and 10 plus 2. Well, this didn't change the value of n. Now we've got n plus 6 equals 12. Up here, it was a 6, right? n equal to 6 to be added to the 4 to get a 10. Look down here. n is still a 6 to get a 12. See? So this equation is equivalent. We can add the same number. We can subtract the same number. We can multiply by the same number, as long as it's not a zero number. We can divide by the same number, as long as it's not a zero. And we'll still have equivalent equation, OK? We'll still have an equivalent equation. So can we figure out what was done to the first equation to get us to the second equation? So look at this. Here's the first equation. Here's the second equation. What happened here to get us to this one? Well, that's kind of easy because we know 2 plus 3 is 5 and 5 plus 3 is 8. So what happened was we added 3 to both sides and that got us from this equation to this equation. Now 2 plus 3 is 5 and 5 plus 3 is 8. We've got n plus 5 equals 8. See? See what happened? Okay, let's try it again, but we're going to do division. This is the first equation and this is the second equation. How did we get from this to this? All right, what can we do to that first one? We can divide both sides by the 4, and you know what's going to happen. We'll end up using the identity property, and we'll get 4 over 4. And when we have 4 over 4, that makes a 1, doesn't it? This turns into a 1. That's identity property. Now we have 1n. There's our friend, the invisible 1, OK? And 20 divided by 4 is 5. That got us to the n equals 5. We got 1n that's equal to 5. Are you confused about identity property? There'll be a link in this description, OK? All right, now, what did we do to this fraction times n equals 8 to get this 2 thirds n equals 16? What do you do to 6 to 8 to get a 16? Well, you multiply it by 2. What do you do to 1 third to get to 2 thirds? We multiply that by 2. So what happened to each side of this equation? We multiplied both sides by 2. And you remember that 2 over 1 equals 2, right, as an improper fraction. I like to do that when I multiply fractions, because then I can just go straight across and straight across. So we have 2 over 3. We have 2 thirds. And the 8 times 2 becomes 16. Now we've got 2 thirds n equals 16, and we got to the second equation. See? Let's do it with subtraction. Here's the first equation, and here's the second equation, OK? So what happened to this one, 12 minus n equals 7, that got us here? Well, 
If we take away 5 from both sides, if we subtract 5 from both sides, 12 take away 5 is 7, and 7 take away 5 is 2, it got us to the second equation. We took away 5 from both sides. See that? Now I want to tell you something else. Look at this one. We've got 4n equals 2. And because that 2 is less than the 4, we know our answer is going to be a fraction. See that? Because 4 times something to equal a smaller number, it's going to have to be 4 times a half, right? If you have 4 halves, then you'll have 2 whole, right? So it's going to end up being a fraction. I want you to look at this one, too. If we have n minus n, or a minus a, or x minus x, and it equals 0, that could be anything. It could be 10 minus 10. It could be 4 minus 4. It could be... 1 third minus 1 third. See, there's lots of solutions for that one. It could be every whole number. It could be so many possibilities, couldn't it? All right? So, those are equivalent equations. Remember, equivalent means equal. Okay? We're going to move to 1.8a, and we're going to talk about reasoning strategies. Okay? All right. I hope I'll see you there. I hope this was helpful. And we're getting through Chapter 1. We're almost there. Bye.